Okay, so uh, thank you for your kind introduction, and uh, I'm happy to be here to e explain our views, Docomo's views on the 5G. Okay, so first, uh, actually, uh, I provided uh, this kind of presentation so many times all over the world, <laughs> and uh, some of you has already <laughs> known very much, but uh, I will repeat. Okay, so uh, this is our views on the network communication society in 2020 and beyond. So we like to uh, realize the everything connected by wireless, not only the, this is not the laser pointer, okay, uh, not only the smartphone or tab tablet, but also the car, train, consumer electronics, and the watch jewelry, house, everything. So that uh, maybe we can provide uh, new services, new excellent services to the customers. And also, of course, we need to uh, extend uh, and enrich the wireless services. We will, uh, currently, uh, we already have a 4K TV set. Maybe uh, by the 2020, we will have a 8K TV set. And the new types of uh, terminal, human interfaces, uh, especially for the uh, Google Glass-like uh, services and the touch internet will be very interesting services in the future. Healthcare is very important uh, because, uh, especially in Japan, the population aging, aging population is a very serious problem. So healthcare, remote healthcare, health check, counseling will be very important. Education, of course, and also safety and lifeline system. Uh, we have uh, many disasters in Japan, so uh, mobile communication system should be a lifeline system for the safety. And uh, of course, cloud computing will be uh, uh, continuously very important as uh, services. And uh, requirements, maybe I don't need to explain this. Most of the people company uh, has the same views on the 5G requirements, especially a higher system capacity, 1,000 times capacity, should be realized for the 5G era. High data rate, uh, reduced latency, massive device connectivity, energy saving, cost reduction. Maybe uh, you can have the same views on that. And the uh, direction of evolution. Uh, not only the spectrum efficiency, but also the uh, spectrum extension and the network densification is needed to uh, uh, meet the tough requirement like a 1,000 times uh, capacity increase. And the traffic offloading is, of course, uh, continuously need to consider. Okay, so okay, these are the need to be considered for the 5G. So this is a, a technical concept, rough uh, concept. And uh, it is very essential to uh, consider uh, to use the higher spectrum band, of course. And uh, there is a possibility that uh, we can use the very wider spectrum band with us at the high spectrum band. So, but also uh, we need to continue to use the existing cellular band. So uh, it is very important to use the both spectrum band, ex existing lower spectrum band and the higher spectrum band efficiently. And we should consider the appropriate proper technologies for both spectrum bands, especially for the uh, higher spectrum band, as you may know, massive MIMO or new numerosity frame structure, uh, frame design will be needed. And for the existing cellular band, uh, we are proposing the non orthogonal multiple access, so-called NOMA, to enhance the existing macro cell. And also, uh, it is very important to uh, deploy the systems, lower existing spectrum band and the higher spectrum band efficiently. That can be realized by we think that the phantom cell concept, this is already uh, under standardization in 3GPP as a name of the dual, con dual connectivity. So uh, even in the 5G era, uh, such kind of the dual connectivity phantom cell concept can work well to use the lower and the higher spectrum band efficiently. This is the phantom cell concept and the dual connectivity. U plane and the C plane is uh, split between the macro cell and the small cell. And the small cell, higher spectrum band should be used. And uh, I think that uh, this small cell layer using the higher spectrum band, this can be a new rat. Uh, this will be required to ex uh, exploit the higher frequency band for 5G, like a more than 10 gigahertz spectrum band. And uh, maybe existing cellular band and the macro cell layer maybe we can enhance the existing LTE advanced systems. So combination between the existing cellular 
band and the uh, enhanced LT advanced and uh, new rat using the higher spectrum band. This is a very essential point for 5G. And the new rat some design criteria. As I said, uh, for the higher spectrum band, maybe uh, in order to have a significant gain, uh, wider bandwidth is like uh, several 100 megahertz to the one uh, several gigahertz or the spectrum band should be used. And the very low latency, for the very low latency, uh, shorter TTI like uh, around the 0 0.1 millisec or the uh, TTI will be required. And also uh, adaptation, for the adaptation to higher frequency band, we should consider the, some kind of scalability of the LT numerology. And uh, in order to uh, realize the low complexity implementation and also easy support of the dual connectivity and so on. And also robustness against the phase noise. Uh, maybe we need to consider new numerology like a new wider subcarrier spacing like this. LT is like this and for the higher spectrum band for the new rat, maybe a wider uh, subcarrier spacing should be considered as a scalable manner from the LTE. And uh, signal waveform candidates. Uh, there are so many studies ongoing on the new waveform, new waveform. Even in my company, we are studying about this. But uh, in any case, OFDM is a very uh, strong technology, it's even for the 5G era. So our OFDM, OFDM as a baseline, we think, due to the high affinity with MIMO transmission and so on. But uh, we can, we should consider the alternatives, like uh, uh, including the uh, DFT spread to OFDM, a single carrier waveform, and also uh, advanced multi carrier waveforms like uh, FEMC or FTM. And uh, especially uh, for the high, very high spectrum band, like above 30 gigahertz, and uh, maybe we can consider the single carrier uh, waveform because that we can expect that the very wide spectrum bandwidth is to be used at the, this kind of very high spectrum band. In order to have a very simplified uh, terminals and uh, devices, maybe we can relax the uh, complexity for the much uh, waveform perspective. So uh, maybe single carrier should be considered for the simplification of the system. But the existing band and also uh, around the 10 giga up to 30 giga, maybe we should use the OFDM technologies continuously. And uh, this is another aspect, flexibility to support variable scenarios due to the wireless back home much hop. And uh, also we can consider the rat design considering the downlink uplink uh, sym symmetry. And also a flexible duplex, uh, we call the flat. And uh, maybe in the future, more flexible use of the spectrum band should be considered. For example, uplink only carrier or downlink only carrier uh, together with the TDD carrier, including unlicensed band. So we should realize the very flexible manner to use the spectrum band efficiently. Massive MIMO in higher frequency. I don't need to explain this detail, but uh, uh, for the higher spectrum band, there is a possibility to use the many antenna elements like this number so that uh, maybe we can achieve the improved spectrum efficiency with a much user spatial uh, multiplexing. And also uh, we should consider the cell range extension by being forming gain. The many people have an interest in the massive MIMO, especially for the small cell use to enhance the capacity. But uh, we think that the extension of the coverage is also very important. If we can use the higher spectrum band uh, for the, not only for the small cell, but also for the macro cell or uh, not the pico, but the medium size of cell, especially consider, considering for the suburban area or rural area. So uh, coverage enhancements will be, will be important and uh, massive MIMO or massive antenna elements will be very useful to enhance the coverage using the beamforming gain. This is our calculation. 
of the uh, coverage enhanced coverage extension. And uh, this is the frequency, this is 3.5 giga, 10 giga, 20 giga. Of course, due to the high pass loss, coverage will be decreased. Uh, but uh, in order, if we can use the many antenna elements, if we consider the a 20, 20 centimeter, 20 centimeter ant patch antenna size like this, 20, 20, uh, we can use the, uh, I don't know, Yes, several antenna elements, many antenna elements, and we can extend the uh, beam forming gain like this. So uh, we, if for the 3.5 gigahertz, around uh, 500 meter coverage can be achieved. 10 giga around the 300 or 400, and even for the 20 giga, maybe a 300 meter coverage can be achieved using thanks to the uh, beam forming antenna gain. If we can use the much big, bigger antenna size, like uh, 80 centimeter by 80 centimeter patch antenna, we can extend the coverage more and more like this. So we should consider this kind of the improvement, not only for the small cell, but also the medium size of the cell or macro cell to enhance the coverage. And also uh, we are thinking that uh, uh, support of wireless backhole and the group mobility. In the smartphone, maybe a massive antenna element uh, implementation is a little bit difficult. But for the car, bus, or train, we can implement a very nice antenna, like a, this kind of the massive antenna, even for the receiver side. If so, uh, we can use the bus mobile devices implemented in the bus with uh, this kind of massive antenna. And uh, BS, this can be uh, some kind of backhaul. And uh, we can uh, provide a very excellent performance in the bus or in the train. So this kind of the use case need to be considered. Okay, so this is uh, our demos. Uh, we developed the 5G simulator. Actually, uh, this was already uh, presented all over the world and even in the Barcelona last uh, this year. But I try to show this quickly. I hope. Oop. This cannot work on the Apple <laughs> PC. Really? Okay, so uh, unfortunately, <laughs> I have to skip this, right? So, but uh, you can see this on my PC later if you want. But in any case, in the in our demo, uh, we showed that uh, if we deploy the twin, 12 small cells in the macro sector, and uh, if we can use the one giga spectrum band with us at the 20 giga spectrum bands, we can achieve the more than 1,000 times uh, performance gain, a uh, capacity gain. And also, uh, as I said, um, group mobility, uh, something like uh, implementation with a massive antenna on the, in the, on the car or bus, we can improve the performance around 1.5 times uh, compared with the very poor antenna on the bus. So uh, I can show you the such kind of demo on, in my, on my PC, not here, sorry. And uh, I click, quickly added this slide according to the, uh, in order to challenge Sarah's presentation. Yeah, I hope that uh, this is aligned with uh, Samsung's views, Howard's views. We think that uh, uh, we really want to deploy that 5G systems in 2020 because of the, some kind of the special requirement in Japan, uh, Tokyo Olympic game summer game, and uh, in order to realize the 5G system, commercial services in 2020, maybe uh, release 14 is a good timing to specify the uh, specific detailed specification, technical specifications, considering the enough time to develop the commercial systems, if we can assume that release 14 timing is around here. 
uh, 2016 or 17. Maybe this 15 can be, should be considered for the 5 system as a, some kind of enhancement, further enhancement of the 5Z, if, of course. But uh, tricky issues, uh, especially uh, higher spectrum bands are required for the 5Z. But uh, at this time, no evidence to have a higher spectrum band because WRC15 will treat the spectrum band less than 6 gigahertz. Possibly the, in the WRC 1819, higher spectrum band above 6 giga can be, will be treated, can be treated, that, but that, that is still under discussion. But in any case, it's a premature to treat the higher spectrum band above 6 giga at this timing, even in the release 15. So how to justify the start of the technical discussion in 3GPP in release 14, 15? Maybe that needs to be discussed in 3GPP and uh, industries. But in any case, we really hope that the uh, I, I want to challenge Ericsson's views. <laughs> Release 14 is a good timing to start the technical specification work. And also, uh, I quickly, I also quickly added the this slide. Thank you for Sarah's, Sarah's comment. We actually started uh, experimental trials with several uh, major companies in the world uh, to to have a, a proof of proof of concept of the 5G technologies. We need to consider the variety of spectrum band and the technologies. So uh, fortunately, we can have a excellent collaboration with this kind of uh, leading companies. So uh, we will try, uh, we will conduct the trials with these partner companies. But uh, I have a strong intention to provide, a, uh, provide the results of the exper experiment trials to in the conference in the public maybe if partner companies are allowed, so that uh, we can promote the 5G discussion in the industry and the academia. Okay, so that's my presentation. Thank you very much.